Live from my mother's basement, here's Johnny! What's going on, guys? Thank you for everyone that came back. Um, that was my epic introduction. If you don't like it, too bad. Just telling the truth. Um, so I actually am in my mother's basement today. I came home for the weekend. What a concept. And I uh, wanted to talk some wrestling with you folks. TNA, Impact, in particular. You know, the follow-up show to the, to the pay-per-view that was bound for glory. And, uh, just... Ugh. Where do you even begin? Some people would say, from the beginning, of course. And to that effect, I just noticed how bald I look, by the way. That's awesome. Cool. Receding hairline. That, that's where you begin with TNA, is people that have receding hairlines and probably should take a break from the wrestling business for a while. And I mean that in the most humble way possible, because I'm not a wrestler. I don't put my body through that. I just watch it on the television and I criticize it. How can you not criticize it right now? TNA has given us two shit programs in the course of a week. I feel like... I feel like if TNA was a restaurant and I ate there, I would have food poisoning. That is how I feel. So, I just, I need to get this off of my chest. You are doing to TNA what happened to WCW. The reason it is in the toilet. And by you, I am referring to the employees that are behind the scenes making the decisions. Those under contract, whether it was because of Jeff Jarrett, whether it was because of Dixie Carter, what you know, whether it's Hulk Hogan, whether it's Eric Bischoff, whoever is pulling the strings back there, you suck. You should probably retire forever from doing anything that has to do with wrestling. And why do I say that? Well, because it's true. This programming has been awful lately. There's been a couple of things to get you excited up to like here, but there's nothing mind-blowing anymore. To give away, you know, a title change like that on free TV one night after the biggest pay-per-view in your history, you have literally have to be out of your mind. There's no other way to explain that. You are going to sink that company like the fucking Titanic. For anybody that doesn't know what the Titanic is, it sunk. Watch the movie. The movie also sunk. Or stunk. Either way. Bad. Don't repeat that. I watched the Off the Rope show. And I watched the British Fist. And I watched... No, I think that was it. Those are the only two videos I've seen so far. And... To emulate a lot of what, you know, the Schleg Daddy said. And to emulate how pissed off Mr. Parkin was... And how disappointed NJ was. I just... I don't know what to say. You know, like... There's a lot of us in the friggin' internet and YouTube wrestling community that are just disgusted. It is totally past time. You know, that the TNA has dropped the ball enough times that... I think they're really gonna be hurting and they're gonna lose fans now. And I don't want that to happen. I truly, sincerely want to see TNA stay in business. I want to see them be competition for the WWE one day. But if they keep making the same crap, awful, no future sight decisions like they're doing right now, there's no way they're going to survive to even try. It's just, it's just so, it's, it's bad. You know, I almost hope that Spike TV has enough of this stuff and just drops them. So that, one, they have to find a new TV deal, and two, maybe they start to really go, oh shit, we should think about what the fuck we're doing. Now, you got a guy like, like James Storm. is a quality guy. He works his ass off. You know, he, he's entertaining on the microphone. He's been babyface heel, babyface heel. He's done it, you know? He's been around in TNA since day one. He helped lay the foundation of the fucking company. He's a guy that deserved a chance at that title. But why are we going to do this at the expense of Robert Roode? 
And why are we going to do this the night right after Robert Roode got screwed as bad as he did? If anything, and why are we given this crap-ass decision? And what part of the writing did we decide that Kurt Angle and Roode signed this special contract in order to not have to wrestle again? Roode was the guy that the whole company was behind. Or we thought was behind. Obviously, in that interview, the Hogan just buried him. And that wasn't right. But that's a totally different issue. Hogan can think what he wants to think. Hogan might be, you know, the most successful wrestler of all time in the industry. But, dude, you're 58. You've had eight back surgeries between this year and last year, I think. Maybe it was all this year. Don't know. Not going to take the time to look it up right now. Making a video. Trying to make a point. Point is, Hogan, go sit down in the back somewhere. Your time is pretty much done. You should be made as a cameo guy. In all other respects, you should not be on television every week. Sting. Oh, why would you make Sting the general manager, vice president, whatever the hell you're making him? Why would you do that? Oh. Now there's going to be time devoted every week to more old people on the TV instead of focusing on what we need to focus on. It's a wonder that Mick Foley wanted out of that damn company. James Storm deserves the title. James Storm does not deserve the title in the way that they gave it to him in order to make it look just not even believable at all. You kick a guy in the head once and all of a sudden you're, you're a champ? When your, your tag team partner had a match at the biggest pay-per-view of the year and couldn't get the job done? Really? I don't... I don't understand. I just really... It does not make any sense to me. I think a lot of people are confused right now. I don't feel like I'm the only one. I would really like... Anybody out there that's watching this video, please leave me a comment. Explain to me why the hell that they would do this. Why they would take a James Storm the night after their biggest pay-per-view, not even set the match up to at, at the next at the next pay-per-view turning point or whatever the hell it's going to be called. Why would you give this shit away on free TV? And why would you do it in a match that lasts that that has a, a one move of doom finish? This is like this is like the finger poke when Nash handed the belt back over to Hogan and they they formed the NWO Elite. This is. This is reminiscent of the same shit that they had to do with, with Sting and Jeff Hardy. It, ugh, such a, I taste shit in my mouth right now. You know, and I haven't been eating asshole lately, so it's from just this product and this booking and these decisions that just don't make any sense. You know, I want to talk about impact. I want to talk about, when I review it, I want to talk about, oh, well, I was excited because they did this, or they did that. But they didn't do any of this or that. They opened with a promo that lasted 45 to 50 minutes. And I just, I couldn't believe it. You know? It was like, what the hell is the point? You had Hogan, you had Sting, you had Kurt Angle, you had Dixie Carter, you had Robert Roode, you had James Storm. And I, I understand that you want to move storylines along and bring other ones to completion and, and you know say everything that you need to say, but Jesus, God, could we have a little bit of action in between all those other segments? Did we have to go 45 minutes with a promo? It might be the longest promo in recorded history. I don't know. I'm just, I'm very upset. The night after one of your biggest pay-per-views, and you don't settle anything that had to do with any of the other matches, it just it seems so bizarre to me. Like, why are we going to have Winter, who just lost the the knockouts title, not saying anything about losing the knockouts title, but just show up for a match with Angelina Love for the women's tag titles, where they don't have any business challenging the women champions anyway, because they haven't competed in tag team matches un until just now. Unless you count Winter being in that tag team match sort of thing, whatever that abortion was called, at Bound for Glory, that Karen Jarrett was a special guest referee, that we should just probably forget ever happened and just flush it down the toilet like it belongs. Because, ugh. Anyway. 
we don't have time on the show to bring out the tag champs to establish anything new of what they're going to do. We don't have... We got a, a little, like, what, a 30-second skit with Eric Young and the television title that they haven't had on television for almost two months. I mean, gosh, don't get me wrong. I'm glad that you want to feature the belt on TV. But that shit wasn't at the pay-per-view. You know, what about... What about all the fallout, you know, with the Samoa Joe, Matt Morgan, Crimson match? How come we don't have anything with that? How come we didn't have anything to do with with Bully Ray and, and with Mr. Anderson, you know? How come any of the other people that competed at Bound for Glory, like AJ Styles and Daniels, you know, they had that really shitty ending match. But obviously it didn't end there. They could have kept, you know, doing something. AJ could have come out and at least said, hey... I beat your ass, it's over, I never want to face you again, and I think that's something that we could all get behind. Give him something else to do. I just, I don't know. The way that they're giving us this really weak product right now, it just, it makes me scream, because it reminds me of, like, 93, you know, 92-ish, of when I was growing up, and, and wrestling went from, like, up here awesome to just nobody cares and I don't want to see that I'm a wrestling fan and that means that I care about the product and I care about its longevity and I'm invested in it but I mean you know it's giving me an identity crisis right now like if wrestling sucks why am I watching it I'm trying to justify my existence here guys I'm a, I'm a wrestling fan this is something that's important to me and you're making it not important to me. You know, I understand I'm going to school and I have life. You know, and I have I have friends and I, I talk to them. And this is a cell phone in which I use to text people every now and then. It's a Walmart prepaid cell phone, which means that I don't really get as much service as I could. You know, and that sometimes when I do the texty texts, they don't send. But that's a total different thing. You know, like I mean, just. Wrestling, big part of my life. And the way that things have been going late, and it's not just TNA. It's the shit with WWE too. But I didn't want to bring that, you know, up and, and drag that out and go on, you know, like a half hour rant. I just really wanted to, to bring the attention and the awareness to what's going on right now. You know, and even with this whole Jeff Hardy and Jeff Jarrett thing, it's so... Ugh. Is there anybody out there that really wants to see this? I don't want to see Jeff Jarrett. I've never wanted to see Jeff Jarrett. I've never been a fan of his. Not once. I thought when he became WCW champion that it fucking ruined the belt. Forever. I mean, between him and David Arquette holding the WCW title, I don't even understand why the WWE would carry a belt around that still is reminiscent of that. It's just... Uh, so, I'm going to cut it right there. I'm going to let everybody that watched this make their own, you know, decisions. Please, if I said anything that resonated with you, like the video. If you want to subscribe, terrific. If you don't, I won't lose any sleep over it. But please, 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 leave your comments below. Let's get a discussion going. And let's get some creative ideas, you know, flooding around about how the hell TNA can improve their product. And let's just show that we are a strong community, whether it be internet-based or YouTube-based or whatever, that our demographic is really sick of this shit and that they need to do something about it. Peace.